Hi, and welcome to Papa's Workshop. I appreciate you stopping by my shop. Today I'm going to be working with the easel software and the X-Carve, showing you how I set up the XY axis for a project and showing some possible pitfalls along the way. Let's get started. So what I've done now, I've opened up a new window in the easel software. And what I want to be able to do is show you what I've got right now. On the left hand side, this is going to be the area that you're going to be designing in. And on the right side, you'll be able to see how your project is progressing. Now right now, if you can see up here, I've got this set for 30 inches by 30 inches. So it shows almost the entire playing field, if you will. Okay, and that's depicted the same over here. I'm not sure if you can see it in the camera, but there's a little dotted line that shows 30 by 30. So what I want to be able to do and make reference to, and I'll be talking about this throughout the video, this is our playing field. This is the area that we have to be able to work with. The machine wants to and must stay in that playing field. If you're designing something and you exceed those limitations, the machine is going to try to go to the location that you tell it to and bad things can happen. And I'm going to give you examples of that as we go through this process. Now, what I'm going to be doing today is showing you how to set up the a new project. And the first thing that I want to point to is this point right here is the XY home position for the machine that is shown right over here in the project display area. And if you look over on the machine itself, there it is. This is going to be the actual XY position reference from the machine itself. So this playing field that we have here is the same playing field as what is displayed on the computer. And I want to show you the first possible pitfalls that you can run into. First thing, anytime that you move the X carve, you should never move it by hand. You should always let the machine do the moving. Now I have a tendency to work both in millimeters and in inches. So if I want to move the X carve now back toward the toward where I am so I can work on it, I can hit carve and I can go down here and I can just simply click on 10. Okay, now what am I in? I'm in 10 millimeters. If I do 10 millimeters and I want to be able to move along the Y axis, I can click on that. Oh, what happened? Did that move 10 millimeters? No, it didn't. Because what actually happened is that this, even though I was looking at it and wasn't really looking, this was set for inches. So what I actually did is move 10 inches. That could be a real problem if, and I'm going to cancel this for a minute, if we're in this area, okay, and let's say we're only 5 inches from our end of our playing field, and we just told the machine to move 10 inches, guess where it's going to try to move? It will try to move 10 inches. So it's going to hit those stops, and it could potentially damage the machine because it wants to move down here. So that's the first pitfall that we got to really be able to avoid. When you're moving the machine, you can hit carve, but you're going to have to look at this very carefully. If I want to move it 10, and I click in there, make sure that you double check. In this case, I want to move 10 millimeters. Double check that before you hit the carve or the movement. So there we go. Now, let me scroll back over here. 
now it's actually going to move the 10 millimeters that I want. So that's the first first pitfall that we have to watch for. The first thing that we're going to do when you begin a new project is set the material dimensions. And you do that by moving up to the top right hand corner and it says material dimensions X and Y axis. Now in our case today I'm not going to worry about the Z axis. It's set at a half inch. It can be fine. It's going to stay there. We're not trying to carve any type of depth at all. So I'm going to go up here to my X axis and I'm going to type in 8.5 inches and on my Y axis I'm going to type in 11 inches. Now with this done we have a new playing field. Since we set this for the 8.5 by 11 this is now our workspace. The machine still could safely move anywhere in the entire playing field but this is the parameter that we set. Right now I still have my XY axis located right here in the bottom left hand corner. Now over here on the design side it's set up the same way and I know this line is going to be very light. Okay on the machine itself I went ahead and put my 8.5 by 11 piece of paper I've mounted that on my table and this point right here is going to be my X, Y position for my workpiece. It's no longer down here in that location because we told the machine something else. We told the machine that the X, Y position was located right here at this point. And to go back and show that, there is your workpiece right here in the design that's the X Y axis and that's the X Y axis here. Off camera I took a moment just to draw a quick arrow that I can use in the presentation today and you can clearly see it in our designated work area of my eight and a half by eleven. You can also see it displayed to the right and that's what it would look like if we carved it. The other thing that I have drawn that's not in that work area is a couple of letters and I'm going to zoom out to show you there's an XY and that clearly identifies where my XY axis is and we're going to be using this also as we go through this presentation but would the X carve carve the XY well in the actual work piece no but what happens if we try to actually carve it so what we're going to do is go over here and do the simulate. We're going to get the detailed preview. And we're going to simulate that. And guess what it's showing? It is showing that it's going to be cutting this arrow in the workpiece. And it's also going to go down here outside of the workpiece and try to cut that as well. So what I want to be able to do now is show you that if you're very very close to this bottom edge when you set up your workpiece you could be trying to force the machine to go off of the table and cut someplace that it can't go to and, and again put it right on the X Y axis and we're ready and be able to follow the steps with easel to be able to prepare to carve and we are ready to carve now and I'm going to go ahead and hit carve and let's see what happens and where it goes <laughs> First thing you notice is that it did exactly what the computer said it was going to do. It went off of the project and it is drawing the X and the Y. Again, what would happen if that was actually out in this area we would be having a serious problem with the machine right now and we would be over here hitting that panic button to stop the machine so it wouldn't cause any damage. So we're going to go ahead and let this do this operation real quick. Now 
Now, one of the things that I've had people ask is, can you take and move the x-axis up to this point? And the answer is, yes, you can. Okay? And this is why you're going to be able to do that. We have the project, and we're going to move it down to the location so that the machine XY axis is right here. And this is going to be off of our workpiece, but it will still carve. What I'm going to do now is zoom out so I can see more of the area. And I want to take my workpiece and actually move that to my top left position, which is this spot right there. And I'm going to set that as 0 and 0. 0 on my x-axis, 0 on my y-axis. So now it has moved. My workpiece is actually showing down in here. My x-y-axis is right here in this location. Okay, so if I want to carve that arrow, let's just move the arrow down there, showing that that is my XY axis. Follow the steps in easel, and we are ready to do my drawing now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the carve button. <laughs> Okay, the next thing that I want to show you is being able to have the XY location in the center of the workpiece. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come up here to my shape, click right into the center, and then I'm going to move my X axis to zero and my Y axis to zero. And now that's in the center place. Now as I design, I can continue to design. I'm going to put my arrow over, pointing right to my XY axis. So right there is where that's going to be. And let's see, let's just make a circle. And let's make that circle with a diameter of, let's say, 3 inches. That would be good. And I could have locked that and just typed that in once, but there we go. And I want to be able to put this circle where it will carve. The center of that circle will be right here at that XY axis. So with my circle highlighted, I'm going to come up here make sure that's in the center. And I'm going to make that 0 on the X axis, 0 on the Y axis. And there it is, it's centered. Now, I also want to be able to have this as an outline. That way you can see it. So when we look at the preview over here, all we're seeing is just one little coordinate here, which is this square. Even though we have our whole design complete. And I want to be able to now carve this, and I'll show you how it will look. Thank you for watching today. If you found this video useful, please remember to hit that like button, leave a comment, and please subscribe. Until next time, have fun, be safe, take care now.